he wore purple all the time? Could we pop legally call him the grapist? Why everyone going with the Mephisto theories? I was like, mm -mm. Hello everyone, I am Victor, here once again, um, as always, your host, um, for the 616 Marvel Family Podcast, um, and here to, I believe, my right, I uh, just need to look around here, uh, where, where, where is that guy going to, um, hi, oh, uh, hey, right up there in my ear, um, might be because of my earbuds, um, <laughs> But yeah, here we have the funny hatter, um, e. who has uh, who has decided to join me for, um, I believe, my uh, winnings. I've decided to take him to uh, to a surprise. Um, yeah. Are we are we there yet? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, the GPS has plugged us in. Uh, we are attending uh, something rather fun today, um, and. Um, so, uh, you know, we got a lot of uh, news on the road trip about, like, you know, uh, Hugh Jack a a Ackman decided to wear some, like, uh, very famous and fun threads. Um, Ooh. You know. Is it orange? No, no. He, he, uh, he decided to go for white, uh, over, uh, yellow, oh. for, like, yellow, um, and blue. Oh. And, um... But, you know, we also have, uh, Spy- I, I, he, he's literally wearing some threads out of this world, you know, um, as well. Uh, literally? What? Literally? Yep. <laughs> um. Sweet. And, uh, yeah, comb uh, and, uh, with, with all that, there is quite a famous gala on the news, uh, periodically. Um, it's gonna be hell to get in, but, uh, it, it's quite fun, um as well and the uh, pattern of all of these and even the upcoming release of barbie is uh fashion is in uh, quite well uh, oh, so and that is why the theme of this episode is superhero fashion fashion yes very fancy clothing of fashion among the spandex wearing type superhero costumes Ooh. is the name of the game today and that is uh what I've decided for today's episode. Um, Are we ranking like best from worst? Our favorite ones? What, what's, um, what's the deal? The latter, yeah. Uh, favorite ones as well as like progression for superhero outfits as well uh, for said favorite. Um, I thought it would be rather fun to go over. Um, Sweet. Do you have a uh, like a specific movie, TV show that you'd like to talk about first? That's a brilliant part, yeah. It can be from, like, a uh, comic book progression of one's uh, superhero co uh, iconic uh, duds, but also how they were translated to live action. Sometimes with a brand new look, but also sometimes with a classic reimagining of an old one. Um, which, uh, yeah, leads to um, quite a few cases. And, yeah, I was inspired by, of course, like a lot of uh, recent... Um, prevalence of some superhero costumes is quite a theme uh right now um of uh of them being back in the spotlight of sorts uh, anyways. um but yeah uh let's see how uh how we're gonna start this off uh i guess uh, i'm going to uh the two of us uh toss the mic into the air and uh see uh see what happens right um <laughs> okay that's what you want to do all right. Okay, it's falling down. It's falling down. I caught it. Here you go. Ooh, thank you. You're welcome. All right. So the superhero costumes uh, I'm going over today is um, on brand with how I introduced this thing, the X-Men. Ooh. Yes, the, te the iconic team itself. Uh, quite a few costumes over the years, um, especially with our latest gala to literally showcase them all, uh, the Hellfire Gala. Um, periodically every year the X-Men are showing off their duds, so mighty impressive stuff to warrant such an event. 
Uh, Warrant indeed. Which, like, is impressive too, because, like, no one would have expected that given where the X-Men, like, started. Their theme of costuming was very much like an altogether sort of, you know, boarding school dress code of superhero outfits in a way. Um, where, like, you know, you must wear yellow and black, them's the rules. Um, like, I like how they, like, that'd be funny if that was, like, the original plan for, like, uh, for actually dressing up, like, in school. Like, say, like, you know how in Harry Potter they dressed up uh, in black and yellow, like, for Hufflepuff? Yeah. Um, and that was originally, like, the design, but then they're, like, a, okay, we got to keep the yellow and black theme, so let's just uh, put that into technical space suits, and uh, then we're going to go out and be superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> like, it is essentially both their superhero uniform as well as their school uniform because, yeah, they're not technically superheroes. They are outsiders of society itself. Um, that just happened to go to school. Yeah, they just happened to go to school and happened to fight crime. Um, you know, just a, as you do. A coincidental thing. And, like, that progression of the costume or costumes for the X-Men is that, like, yeah, initially it was not plural aside from slight differences. Like, you know, some would wear, like, a mask, like, you know, a beast over this, like, very large and stretched out egg. You know, Cyclops, of course, has his iconic visor. Um, and, like, Jean as a uh, Marvel o- o girl also, like, wore a uh, mask over her face uh, until far later where, yeah, it kind of was redundant when she stopped going by Marvel Girl in the first place, um, as often, really. Um, And as well as that, like, characters within the X-Men, like, had a ton of changes to their lives where they became distinct superheroes themselves. Like, you know, they wore outfits in the way that back then were a mark of their association with the X-Men, but now, like, so many of them have so many different colored designs and, like, looks to them to the point where they could go out and be their own superhero, like, solo, no relation to the team. Where... So with that in mind, and that said, what do you think about the first X-Men, X-Men movie to where <laughs> they decided not to use any color whatsoever? Yeah, like, that was one of the things that came up uh, uh, up in my life that, like, brought this episode to fruition. So, like, uh, keep that in mind. I the air random person online uh, <laughs> trying to rebut me uh, on this one. <laughs> where, um, basically, it was, like, when the... Um, the Wolverine news came out that, like, yeah, he was, like, gonna wear the iconic digs of, like, blue and yellow um, for the new uh, Deadpool movie. Um, and uh, the whole, whole, whole thing was that, like, you know, defending the fact that, like, you know, oh, 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 but, like, you know, the previous app has worked and it's like, no, they didn't. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, they didn't. Uh, they just did that because they were too scared to put on color. Yeah, and like coming up with excuses of just like, oh, but the, uh, like, how are they supposed to sneak around in yellow? It's like, what's sneaking around? Like, one of them is a weather goddess, and like, one has like chrome shiny skin, and one can shoot fireworks out of her hands. Like, how the hell are any of these guys supposed to be stealthy? So, so why are we going with black here? Uh, blade went all black so the x-men are gonna go all black too yeah oh okay but bring up a cool argument do they have uh do they have jackets like him no it's gonna be skin tight and it's gonna be black yeah it's gonna be leather yes they're gonna basically be Hispanics? no wearing like these bumpy textures on their suits so it doesn't even accomplish like the cool vibe as much as just Looks like a different kind of weather job uh, when you think about it. Um, like eh, it, it's it's like not, not really too good, uh, and even for other cases of like early two thousands, like darker clothing where like there's some Easter egg to the original like design. In this case, there's like yellow lines in between the outfit, but like they're very like lightened, like to a practically like kind of like peach or like desaturated sort of color uh to them um on those lines like this is also something that they replicate like later in the movies with like 
X Men Apocalypse. Um, no, wait, not X Men Apocalypse. Uh, Dark Phoenix. Yeah, the one that did not have X Men at the start of its title. Um, <laughs> well, didn't they also have like a uh, yellow and black costumes in First Class? Yeah, First Class was the one that actually did the original iconic designs uh, justice with um, with like everyone's uh, or uh, even from some of the distinctive ideas for each costume to differentiate them that was originally there like for example like banshee a, a like having the same design as everyone else but it also includes the wings and sort of frilly look for uh the wind to catch within it um so like yeah they uh captured a lot of uh, uh, those like visual differences uh for each Except for, you know, Mystique, where it's like, yeah, uh, it doesn't make too much sense for, like, you no, know, uh, for, uh, overall, and, like, you know, there would probably be something more distinct about, you know, someone who's going to be shape-shifting out of the outfit 90% of the time. Uh-huh. I find it funny that, that they give her a costume, and she can literally wear anything, and she can shape-shift into anybody with any form of clothing. And uh, in the first one, they decided to like, hmm, you know what? Let's just make her naked. Yeah. Uh, because she can shape shift into anything, right? It's like, yeah. Is that gonna make the movie rated R? No, we're just gonna make her blue, and we won't add nipples, or uh, we, she's not gonna have a vagina whatsoever. Um, she'll just be blue, and she'll have red hair, and uh, that's it. That's the costume. Which uh, brings all sorts of anatomy questions uh, to uh, the front. Uh, yeah. Does, like, she shapeshift every time she needs to pee? Like, um... And does she have a preferred method of peeing? Does she prefer to turn into a guy so she can pee through, like, a penis? <laughs> yeah, she literally needs to manifest genitals every single time. Um, <laughs> that, that, that seems like hell. Like, like when... And you are te- you can tell that you are full on, like, fluids and stuff, like... Do you, like, get an indication that something needs to burst and yet can't until you shapeshift? Like... Yeah, and imagine if they, like, put, like, those, like, power-dampening collars on her. And, like, she oh cannot God. use that, like, whatsoever. Oh, God, that, that's shape-shift. agony. I know, right? Jeez, no, no wonder Ma- uh, Magneto, like, you know, had such an epic portrayal at the end of the series there. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, actually, the ser- uh, uh, she ended like as a human being. So actually, Magneto was giving her a favor. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? He's like a finally you, you can, can pee, pee. Raven. <laughs> yeah, you can poop on your own, my dear. You're not one of us anymore. See, back in uh, when you worked for me, I forced you to not pee. <laughs> I mean, they. I'm pretty sure they can't pee either if they have like those like skin tight suits on them, especially when they like oh, yeah. just got done with Juggernaut, who just wears rocks as a costume. Yeah. Just like uh, smashed a rock for a few days and then just put it on his head, and and that's the thing. Like it was, it was a lot of the case. Like at minimum, serving purposes for the outfit. First class is probably the first time that it was both functional and a tribute to, like the various outfits that work, including at the end with Magneto's, of course, iconic duds. Um, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Like uh, it actually seemed practical like an actual like set of flight suits yeah like not only did it fit the explanation for how they got them in the film of being like this government team originally um but also like yeah served the iconic uh like look of being this first incarnation of the team Mm -hmm. which is ironic because they later went for the flight suit explanation again (laughs) for their (laughs) looks let's go for the flight suits that are all black again for, like, Apocalypse, uh, the, it was actually, like, blue, white, and gray, which, like, who the hell is wearing these? Um, what version of the Air Force did they rob? <laughs> yeah, because I, I swear, like, every, almost every flight suit that I see is either, like, green or, like, some kind of, like, dark-related kind of green. Yeah, it's camo for, like, military association, typically. yeah. Like, yeah, that is typically what ends up, um, like, occurring. 
Um, yeah, and in the movie, like X Men Apocalypse, came out like to a time to where superheroes were popular enough to where like people were demanding uh, like original looking costumes from yeah. like, the characters that are wearing them. But then they thought it was like, you know, what, just go back to the original X Men to where they just wear all black. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't all black. It was just sort of a gray slash blue and white vibe. Like they did not really have any sort of consistent coloring with that one. Uh, well, still, yeah. My point yeah. is, is that they still lack color in them to make them pop out to where they just look like oh, a sure. group of yeah. stuntmen. Yeah, it's kind of just like everyone's just sort of in a weird color combination for the most part of muted colors mm-hmm. there. Like, you know, like some characters in Apocalypse for, or Horsemen, like... You know, you had Psylocke wearing her her uh, digs and, like, Dark Angel, uh, well, Archangel and, like, Magneto, but, like, then the X-Men don't. (laughs) Yeah, the the villains get the cool costumes, but not the superheroes. Yeah. And then then they, they eventually get their superhero costumes at the end of the movie. Yeah, like, we finally got the iconic, like, looks, the very striped pattern, which actually... More is what Cyclops is wearing today, actually, with like his hair exposed overhead. Um, yeah, for like uh, the uh, modern age, um, as well as yeah, Jean, um, even Mystique actually wearing clothes in white. Um, like even uh, like as a hero on the X Men, like yeah, pretty uh, impressive progression there. Eventually, uh, where all of them are wearing like their distinct superhero uh colors for like each one but then they all just go back to wearing like uh a muted version of the yellow uh by the next one like in dark yeah there was there was definitely a plan there yeah like it's like it's it's yellow which i think they assume that audiences wanted but like it's also a very like out of touch yellow. Yeah. It's like just just throw yellow in there. Oh, what kind of shade of yellow? Just yellow. <laughs> yeah, like it's one that's practically like, you know, bleached out in a way. Yeah. Make it as boring as possible. Yeah, like <laughs> we need to make we need to make the blood stick out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we murder uh, one of them. <laughs> oh man. And but, but speaking of blood, uh, what about other movies of superheroes in their costumes? Do you think uh, really stick out to you, or do you, or do you want to complain about? Yeah, like um, like the whole whole thing with once uh, that were like impressive, at least like in the X realm, was of course like yeah, Deadpool, um, like the pinnacle of it, and like why they're also continuing that trend with recovering things for Logan. Uh, as well Um, because like yeah that was like very much an iconic like design right there being brought to life Um, Mm -hmm. though also uh, a couple of other ones that were quite impressive was the um, the shows as well um, on how they brought some um, going forward Um, for instance the gifted uh the nice little, little uh, factor there was that they played with those expectations of previous Fox productions on superhero outfits. Hmm. Um, where I, I, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the gifted. So like, wh- wh- who exactly like got a good costume or got like a bad costume? Um, Polaris, uh, Magneto's. Uh, like daughter um, had a, a case where initially, like it was playing with the audience expectation that her iconic green hair would not be presented at all, um, huh. by like her uh, like having black hair. Uh, but then she is under arrest uh, early on in the series, and then like in a uh, shower hour scene reveals that like yeah she washes out the uh, dyes of her hair, hair and does in fact have green hair. Wait, how do you wash out the dye? Is it like one of those like 
temporary dyes to where you just like put it in for a day and then it'll like wash off later or yeah it's like, it like just like, a uh, dye it? like a bad dye job sort of deal like it's not a permanent one okay uh, because it's like it's like one of those deals. Where, like if you start sweating too much, it, you're gonna start like sweating that color. Yeah. It, is that is that the case, or did it, like she actually go in for like a full dye job? No, she didn't. Uh, didn't seem to go for a full all, all one, considering how brief it was. So yeah. Ah. No, they like easily wash out. And then uh, later, Magneto actually gifts her uh, the helmet uh, itself in the series. As a uh, mail, oh, Magneto's gift. actually in it. Uh, briefly, it, it, he does like mail it to her. Uh, the uh, iconic oh, headpiece. Boo! Oh, yeah. boo! 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 It's like, yeah, Legion managed to get Charles, uh, but yeah, the gifted did not manage to get Magneto. Um, anyway. I'm, uh, I'm recruiting. Here's my helmet. <laughs> And, like, yeah, it was, like, recreated into the green headpiece as well um, in order to uh, be able to get that into the show. Um, <laughs> Maybe it'll be like that. <laughs> I wonder if it's, like, that scene from, like, a Titan season three where, like, Batman or Bruce Wayne shows up and say, I did it, dick. I did it, dick. I killed the Joker. I'm not going to be Batman anymore. Be a better Batman than me. Okay, bye. <laughs> I mean, in that case, like, Magneto wasn't exactly quitting. In fact, he was, like, you know, not there because he was too busy doing the murders. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, daughter. I I'm, I gotta do some murdering today. Oh, boy. Here I go killing again. Here's my helmet. Uh, be good. Yeah. But, like, in the, those fa- actors, like, those are good tributes to, like, the design at least. But, like, in other cases where, like, you know, of course, there is the, like, iconically uh, trashed on case of, like, you know, Deadpool and X-Men Origins, uh, once again being Deadpool. Uh, in that case was, like, you know, literally just the line patterns of Deadpool <laughs> over human skin. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was uh, such a great choice. I remember the first time I actually saw that because at the time I wasn't a big Deadpool fan, and I just remember vaguely seeing like his mask. It's like, oh cool, they they made it look like his mask. And then when I went to go read the comics, kind of like uh, how we I was talking about like with Moon Knight after I saw it, and I read the comics like, oh my god, what have they done? What is this? The only real factor there of note with that one is that it's literally Wolverine's nightmares collided. Yeah. <laughs> Deadpool combined with the Teenage Cyclops. <laughs> 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 yeah, that probably would have meant something had he actually made relationships with those people. I mean, like, yep. I, he made a relationship with Wade, but it's like everybody else is like, it's nothing. Yeah, he uh, then got his memories raised before he uh, met Cyclops. And, like... Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. And, of course, uh, Magneto himself. Um, like, he's the one that has had his costume, like, throughout uh, the series, um, relatively. Um, and, like, most of the time, like... With the purple design, like, while prominent and purple is quite uh, it's, uh, impressive for Magneto, um, the red is in there to make it pop. Like, it's very dark, and in a lot of darker scenes in the series, like, it practically comes off as black. <laughs> mm-hmm. in, yeah. in so many degrees there. Um, I, I, I think it's that effect that, like... It's trying to tell you that it's black, but like once you see it in a light, it's like a, to, sh- to make sure that it's not like uh, being shaded or anything. Because they did that a lot in like this always bothered me. But like whenever you see like uh, characters that have black on them or like their costumes are black, like say like in a uh, what is it, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man for example, and like every time you see Venom, it, he's actually like purple because yeah. he's in lighting because it's trying to like give you almost like that sleek, almost like neon look to show you that it has some color to it. But like. Yeah, as go time the, goes uh, on, like it, it, he's just purple. 
Yeah, there's there's those misconceptions always with the lighting, um, and Venom's in Ultimate's case was very much uh, similar to the case that the comics originally had, where Venom's lighting was blue, um, and like yeah, to contrast against like his uh, his black appearance and to actually allow him to appear um, as an outline of his shape and caricature in comics. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, because like like that lighting, like sometimes like it like overwhelms the character too much to where like a characters that are supposed to be black end up looking more like a different color, like either purple or blue, yeah. and like the entire costume is now blue, or like the entire costume is now purple or like a dark green. Yeah, it's it's why the absence of it um, would basically just mean that they blend in too much with the shadow, and so literally just I don't know facial features just floating around um like fighting our heroes i guess <laughs> yeah i think i don't understand how people don't like get this i know that they want their comic books to pop out but it's like if you're going to do black it's like it's okay to have like a little bit of like white shine in it like every once in a while but you don't have to like put in yeah. a color to show that it's black and then use more of that color later yeah, it's unless it's like it was like a printing issue, maybe like with the Hulk, to where like it, it, they couldn't print gray, so they just decided to go green. Yeah, that case though is less a lighting factor and more that they changed the color entirely. Um, yeah, where his uh, not only the shading would be green, but like his skin itself would be green. Um, yeah, which these lighting fixtures were were actually what created what practically is a comic version of the what color is the dress uh, debate. Um, and here's my stance on that, really. Like, it is practically a case of, when it comes to, like, comic book outfits, where the medium will translate what the colors will be, but, like, still having tributes to what originally was there. Like, for instance, Spider-Man 2099 in, like, media translations um, was no longer the guy in the black suit, but rather blue and red, as iconically Spider-Man and his colors, even for this future Spider-Man. Um, but even with that factor, like, the lighting issue wasn't what caused that. Like, in the video games where he first got translated out of comic books, the suit is still black. It just has, like, a neon color outline within the suit itself. Like, you see uh, little bits of technology within it um, for uh, the game's design that creates that iconic color element because you can't create that same uncanny alley of like lighting creating like shapes because they don't like these are 3d models in a game or say a successful sony blockbuster um by comparison to a comic book in terms of how the shapes will be translated Like, that will always be different. And, like, same thing when it comes to many sort of practicalities of design to different mediums. Like, that will always happen. But the tributes can still be done under that same metric. Um, And, like, that is the perfect balance to be struck. Like, that you know that you are going to be dedicated in making sure that people can still recognize these characters and who they are as the outfits make the uh, superhero. Um, But also not in a way where you are failing at, like, recognizing the difference between a comic book and what it will then extend into. Yeah. So with that being said, uh, what what do you think of, like, a... The translation of costumes, like coming into like more accurate like uh, m- depictions of costumes, like say in, like in movies like Deadpool or uh, Spider Man, and uh, this could be any Spider Man movie. Yeah, because yeah, we've had a few by now. Um, 
Uh, but, just a few. Just yeah. a new few to name. A few versions of uh, of the suit come to life. Um, and like, yeah, that, that one has been like the perfect example of a case where like the uh, the costume has had numerous renditions of like varying accuracy uh, displayed but also varying ways of bringing elements of the suit to life um for instance like toby mcguire's like i, I don't care air of how much people like love the suit it was very much shape only like it was done what do you mean by that like it was done to capture the shape of a suit into reality of like Todd McFarlane's like wide-eyed designs. Well, not wide-eyed, but like stretched-out uh, eyes, um, like bold line work, like that kind of thing. Um, although, of course, in terms of Toby's suit, it was uniquely silver, which like yeah was very much. Um, like a way that stand it out um, that version of Spider-Man as not only the first mainstream debut of the character to live action, um, but also pretty much instantly a way to distinguish him for like when a live action version of him would be showing up in like video games or like multiverse events. Like you'd easily be able to point out Silver line work on that one. That's Tobey Maguire, you know, swinging in the corner there, among all these spider people. Yeah, that kind of bothered me. I was kind of hoping that they were like a, she was like a different suit for Tobey Maguire, so you could tell the difference between them. Because it, if you're not familiar, like with the, the costumes as much as like say like Victor and I are. Uh, and you're not like paying like very close attention to the detail, then you're not gonna. It's gonna be hard to tell the difference between like which Spider-Man is which because they are they, have, although only two of them have blue outlining like uh, under the red, and one of them just has black. It's still hard to tell because like the colors have darkened, and unless you're like looking for like the gold symbol, it's gonna be hard to tell the difference of like which Spider-Man is which. Yeah, like uh, from a distance, they are are all patches of like red. Um black and blue typically uh just Mm -hmm. swinging through the sky um on webbing that you also can't see because you know they're super thin um like strands of webbing and then of course you know you got andrews with the uh sunglasses and much more of a like you know practical streetwear kind of skin tight spandex design um going for hey this is the spider-man suit that like he could literally make himself um yeah um kind of vibe um which carried on into the sequel in terms of the materials of the suit but at the same time literally just going back to uh andrew uh, uh, like uh toby's in terms of like shape um overall like uh with like even the very same um line work just like the same symbol that become iconic with that series of the extended stretching uh, spider leggings. Um, there's a uh, there's like a artwork of uh, like Peter Parker, like an an older Tobey Maguire Peter Parker, to where he's just like wearing like a jacket and like he yeah. he, does, he doesn't bother like wearing the mask anymore. I think that definitely would have like helped if they had something like that because at that point like everybody's familiar with Tobey Maguire because they see yeah, all the, of his um, movies. The and, Last Stand suit, I believe I see. In, like, Last Stand. There you go. Yeah. Works, yeah. Which would have been cool, yeah, of, like, bringing together some, like, iconic design work there. I can get why they didn't, because of the fact that, like, you'd have to explain, like, some of these changed factors there. Um, well, yeah, but, like, they, they explain, like, stuff, like, to each other like, yeah. in very little detail, like, about, like, their own lives. And, like, uh, with Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, he goes, like, uh, 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 you, you made things work with your Mary Jane's, like, yep. And that's it. And like, yeah. all they had to do was like saying like, uh, oh, uh, he goes like, huh, I had a, a suit like yours too. He's like, yeah, what happened to it? It's like, uh, everybody found out I was Spider-Man. <laughs> so I, don't, I just don't bother wearing the mask anymore. Then Tom's just up in the it, corner it, going, uh, could, hashtag relatable, man. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you could have it to where like uh, he's like, uh, oh, everybody knows you're Spider-Man too. It's like, yeah. So I just kind of rolled along with it and just continued being Spider-Man because everybody just sees me as Spider-Man. And then maybe you could have like interwoven that into like where uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man learns like uh, you got to move forward. You can't like try to like keep fixing things all the time when it's like um, or whatever the point of the movie was. But I think you get the idea what I'm going for. I mean, he was mostly forced to make the spell, and like, yeah, uh, it was mostly a message of like what you only learned across the entire film, anyway. But yeah, take responsibility of your mistakes. Yeah, um, classic Spider-Man motto. Um, and get a and wear a new costume after you do. Yep. Well, yeah, helpful for marketing, even though it's probably going to be replaced by the black suit like immediately. Uh, mm-hmm. And like, yeah. I mean, I think the vengeance complex with, like, Gwen and stuff probably could have also had Andrew uh, in the black suit, too. But, like, yeah, again, like, these these are factors that you'd have to, like, explain with, like, some bit of extra minutes, which is fine. But, yeah, I, I can get that they wanted the iconography of just, like, oh, he's wearing the suit, um, you know, mm-hmm. that everyone, like, grew up with and stuff. Because, yeah, the, the, they have power, even if I have some problems with the previous suits um i can still get that there is nostalgia among them like andrew was actually the one i grew up with like i mainly grew up as with him as my spider-man um so i get how that works um of like a design that sticks into the head uh, even if like it's not necessarily like the most iconic design like we're getting recently with where uh, Tom Holland uh, shifted into now, um, where like not only do you have the full spandex design, but you also have him with the iconic expressive eye- eyes that uh, he started with, the web wings, like all these different factors um, that we now have uh, in store, um, which like translated into every design uh, since like Spider Verse, albeit to a more limited degree. Um, has these uh, expressive eye lines. Um, there's not as like extruded from the outfit. Yeah, but still, it's like really cool. Uh, same thing. With that the, made me think. What the what, video games too? Um, yeah, I was thinking about that. What do you think about like uh, animated projects, like video games or like animated movies, and like their takes on uh, comic book costumes? Like it's interesting because a lot of them, like of course, bring in the iconic design because both of them are drawn mediums like you can easily draw them either way um but the thing that like has each of them stick out is the particular art style like that is what like artists recreate when again these guys show up for like multiverse events and stuff in comics and even in movies uh when like these iconic designs return like you know people like like, I personally panicked when I saw Josh Keaton Spider-Man show up in, like, Across the Spider-Verse. And all that it took was him being drawn in the, like, particular style, or at least how his model is done, because, like, it's 3D animation now. Um, and also being, like, just as short, if not shorter than Miles, because that's how he looked like in the show. Of, like, you know, this very distinctive shape. Um, you know, same thing with, like, you know, say, Wolverine returning for the upcoming, like, X-Men 97. Like, you know, everyone's gonna cheer when you see those iconic, uh, 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 iconic cowl of Batman and, uh, lips conjoining, um, like, once more. Um, and, like, there, there are, of course, ones that were made from scratch of, like, creativity of the artists themselves um with animated projects uh for instance you know spider-man unlimited uh even if that was mainly done in tribute to spider-man 2099 uh because they had to um yeah but uh it's become like an iconic design in itself like it's a paradox in a way of these adaptations of getting into people's mindsets and being as grand as they are um Mm -hmm. Like, everyone has their own um, imagining uh, based on these cartoons of how these characters uh, translate. 
And while it's a paradox in some way of it overwhelming creative ideas of like, you know, a, uh, a poor artist like being told, oh, everyone likes this design, draw it like this, draw it like this. You, you make this, like this design right here that everyone loves. Everyone loves this one particularly. <laughs> And you will make it like this, but but I want to make my own design. No, you won't. <laughs> scrap, no, scrap your is. creativity. <laughs> <laughs> I said, make it black. <laughs> Everyone likes this <laughs> because it made us money. <laughs> um, and um, and yeah, like. Like the Hulk does not have to deal with these problems, thankfully. <laughs> no, he's he's just basic. He's like Namor, to where they're just basically naked. All yeah. you need to do is just put slap shorts on them, and they're pretty much good. And it, what's funny is like with the Hulk too is like uh, you can basically just strap any shorts. It, it's just the green that pops out. Yeah, like um, you know, it's uh, live action designs. They uh, did that a lot, even though again, purple is personally like, come on, guys. Um, like it's it's well, just I, I as think... iconic as stuff he wears. Well, it wasn't like like the point of, like that Stanley was trying to do to so where like green and purple usually means villain. Yeah, and... it was the uh, color theory um, there with the uh, design that like it was to subvert expectations that typically you know these these iconic uh, villains and uh, characters from like fantasy um, and then comic books. Uh, were dressed in green and purple, you know, Loki, uh, Doctor Doom, um, like Magneto, you know, all these iconic foes dressing in like green and purple, um, or sometimes their skin is like green or purple. Um, so the Hulk, like, upon initial like looking at the covers of like his adventures, you know, you'd initially go like, you know, what is he this like dastardly foe or you know monster of the story? Um, yeah. I mean, by the way he acts, uh, I'm pretty sure people would think that. Well, yeah, uh, his actions also translate that, but in the stories themselves, especially back then, he was mostly very stoic and well-spoken, and uh, similar to Frankenstein's monster, um, and wishing to be left alone. So the very menacing cover appearances of the Hulk would be what gives that initial villainous vibe. Um like, because, yeah, it's all about appearances initially, like, that give off what appearance, like, characters need to give off um, of a uh, sense of uh, mystery and of appearance, um, not only in how they present themselves, but also how their costume presents. Presentation! Because, like, Spider- mm. uh, that's why, like, Spider-Man's expressions of his mask um, is so important because like he can give a look of like uh, teen like innocence but also of like menace or determination uh, depending on how he uh, squints and uh, presents with uh, his versatile cowl um, or well that's not really a cowl um, and yeah that, that is also like why like getting back to the original uh, point there with the X-Men like them all being of distinct colors and designs allow them all to express themselves in a way that's not just about being a unit, but about being these outcasts of, like, expressing themselves in their iconic clothes as people, as any of us do, um, every day. Um, we dress um, in ways that are distinctly ourselves, and, uh, yeah, that is sort of the vibe that generates uh, itself um, with them. Well, all said and done, yeah. Costumes are ourselves, especially as flashy as they can be. Yeah, I'd like to wear spandex every day if I could. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? Yep. Alrighty. Well... Thank you very much, Victor, for telling us of your opinions on costumes. I'm pretty sure this uh, might be a topic that we might come back on. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely. Later it's on. an inevitability. Yeah. Um, but... There's so many costumes we got to bitch about. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, yeah, it'll probably come up later with uh, different history, new outfits, and uh, plenty of enjoyment. But please fill up your drinks at uh, the 
Hellfire Gala, wear your best uh, Clintar, uh, and make sure they don't eat any brains. <laughs> just just keep feeding it chocolate. Yeah, it'll be yeah fine. exactly. It's, it's not uh, different from anybody's uh, Tuesday afternoons. Um, so yeah, I hope you all enjoy um, this Fashionitas, and put down in the comments uh, what your favorite superhero costume is, and which one you would actually want to wear. Ooh. as well just to vary it up because uh, i know this question has been asked a lot because yeah a lot of iconic comic book at this um so i thought i'd switch it up a bit um and uh yeah congrats uh to myself congratulations to me yeah. who's the host with the most right i'm gonna be the focus oh yeah congratulations to and uh thank you uh <laughs> but i had her for uh facilitating uh the quiz so that way I could uh, earn it fair and square um, to uh, get this episode in the first place. Uh, oh, you're welcome. I'll make it more difficult next time. I'm sure you will. Thank you. I uh, hope uh, you all, all have a uh, fantastic uh, day. Um, I'm here to uh, say a goodbye. Bye-bye. Well, boy. <laughs>